and Kenny and Haley all have these great presentations, and I'm coming up here to explain to you why I think video games are, you know, they should be taken more seriously. And I'm afraid that you guys will think of it as being a little juvenile, but then I realized that's kind of ironic, because that's the whole point of this presentation, is to prove that they're not really juvenile. So let me explain. Um, oh, I'm having some problem with Haley. There we go. I think that video games are almost a one-up on both books and movies in terms of being an invested experience. When you have a book, you have a picture. It gives you words, and you're allowed to think of what... You're able to come up with the experience by yourself, but it's not a full picture. You're not able to see what the original author intended for you to see. Meanwhile, in a movie, you have just that. You have exactly what the author intended you to see, but you're not invested in it. You get to see the same movie whether you care about the movie or not. It'll always be exactly the same. Meanwhile, in a video game, it's, think of it like, a uh, movie would be a picture, and the video game would be a panoramic view. You can look around, you can edit, you can pick things up, and you can change them. It is an experience that you're invested in, because you're looking at it and you say, I'm, I'm interested, I have a part in this world. And let me explain a little bit more about that. In the ninth grade, I, I'll be honest, I really didn't have very many friends. I spent a lot of time reading books and watching movies and playing video games. And there was a certain video game called Bioshock. In this video game, I'm not going to go too in-depth on it, but I want to get two points across. One, it had a very immersive story. You could play it, and you could forget, even though it did sublime things, very surreal things. You were in an underwater city, but you could forget that you weren't playing the game. It was very frightening for the time, because it was just very like here. There'll be some pictures here. And these are a little bit blurry, but you can see that, you know, they're very, there's some very intense imagery. And the other thing I wanted to do is that there's a focus on story. The author had a point he wanted to get across. The entire city is, the, uh, is based on Ayn Rand's objectivism. And the entire story is about how if people are given their own way, society will eventually fall apart. You can't have society that's motivated entirely by human desire. So that, I think, is an example of a game that is both engaging and gets a point across that is serious. But in a sense, it's also commercial. It was a shooter. You shot things, and you walked around a level to win. Because, let's be honest, if you were just wandering around the ruined city, you wouldn't be too terribly interested in it, unless you were like me and you were a total pirate. <laughs> So, what I'm going at is entertainment sells. And that's why I think a lot of people consider video games to be juvenile. Because people, video games cost a lot of money. A lot more than a book does. On the same scale as a movie, perhaps even more. And the thing is, they want to make something that's going to sell a lot of copies. So they have to balance. They have to balance between something that's meaningful and something that's entertaining. And I put a scale up here on games that I think are meaningful versus entertaining. And I'll tell you that in Money Made, I'd say it goes left to right. Call of Duty makes far more money than any of the games to the left of it. But in terms of enjoyment, the enjoyment I got out of these games, I think the most enjoying games, or the, most, the games I got the most enjoyment out of, are the ones on the left, the ones that actually had something important to say, something serious to say. While I think that ones that were just there for fun, well, they're fun. They're not really, they don't have any meaning. They're not, you, you read a book, you watch a movie in order to become invested in it. There's something that you want to watch. There are times where you just want something entertaining, but there's, video games become special when there's something more to it. Um, those are some examples of some movies that are fairly commercial. They were meant to experience success because they're full of action. And I'm not saying action in video games and movies is bad. That's what sells, and a lot of people like that. But for games to be serious, and for games to not be considered something that only children will enjoy, there needs to be some kind of depth behind them, something very important. And that's why I think games that aren't influenced by money,
games that get all their money through fundraising or are independent projects made by single people or small groups of people usually make the best titles. And I have a few things here. Kickstarter, that's one of the most wonderful inventions for anyone who wants to get anything done, but has absolutely no money. If you're poor and you have a great idea, Kickstarter is the best way to do it. And recently, great games have come out using Kickstarter and Steam and all kinds of wonderful programs that are meant to get good games out for no money at all. Because if you're not invested in making money, if you don't want to make a profit, if you don't have money that you're willing, that you're losing, if you don't sell games, then you're able to make things that you like, things that will appeal to more people. And that's really what art is. Art is not meant to be commercial. Art is meant to be something that has meaning to you, that you actually have some investment in, that you like. And it doesn't matter if other people like it, because it's what you want. It is something that you show to people. So here's some examples. Uh, some of you probably played these games, most of you probably haven't. But Braid has been considered one of the greatest indie games to come out this year. It has great uh, storytelling progress, it's very abstract, it has great mechanics, and it was probably made in some guy's basement over the course of a year for less than $100. And that's the kind of game that's good, the whole struggling artist mechanic, if you have nothing to lose, that's when you make the best games. There are some other stuff here. Games aren't only meant to be entertaining. They're all, they, they can also have a purpose. There's a great book here called Reality is Broken. I read it in 10th grade. My 10th grade English teacher recommended it to me. Um, it talks about how games can be used to serve a purpose. It talks about how games can be used to help Alzheimer's patients. You, you can play memory games. You can help them regain their memory. And it has been proven that when you play these games, your symptoms will be repressed. You will live longer by playing these video games. Down here, Carnegie Mellon University has a game called the ESP game that they use to create their own artificial intelligence. Two people on two different computers are given the same object, and in two minutes, they have to come up with as many ways to describe that object as possible while avoiding certain obvious words. Like in this case, you couldn't say purse or handbag. You have to describe it in as many ways as you possibly could. And the goal is to try to think of things that the other person would also say. And the more matches you get, the more points you get. And that would allow people to be able to the artificial intelligence would be able to tag objects, to be able to recognize objects, to be able to find objects, which is one of the most difficult things to do in computer programming today. Computers have absolutely no way to find out where things are. They can't recognize an object, and this is trying to change that. Um, and I think one of the things about video games that makes it so disliked, I would say, not really disliked, but it's new. When television first came out, not many people watched television. When the internet first came out, it wasn't used by anyone except for certain small fan-based communities. Video games have only really become popular in the past 10 years. They really haven't been used as an artistic medium except for maybe in the past five at most. So as you can see from this graph, it'll just keep going up and up. More and more people, well, this is for cell phones and internet because I couldn't find anything related to the topic, but it shows my point that over time, more and more people will come to accept it, and hopefully we'll get more and more content, and hopefully we can get to a more and more powerful artistic message, and video games can become as much art as any painting or TV show. Thank you.